Hi, this is Doug from Who's Right. You're listening to Movies, Music, Me. 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 Welcome back. I have returned from the States, and I, I've been back for a while now actually, but it's just taken me way too long to make videos. But here we are. I imagine for everyone on Instagram, this is a bit fucking annoying probably, because I've already posted my entire best list on there. I just wanted to post it in video form as well for people on YouTube. I should probably stop posting on Instagram, I should just do the videos honestly. <laughs> But anyway, you might be wondering, what are the best movies of 2021? Was 2021 a good year for movies? Yes, it was. In my opinion, it was better than 2020. Not better than 2019, because that's honestly really hard to beat, but maybe on the on the same level as 2018? I don't know. Regardless, it was a good fucking year for movies, honestly. I believe we have 20 here, if I'm not mistaken. But right before that, there are some honorable mentions, just seven of them, so I'm just gonna speed through them, and then we'll get to talking about the, the, the meat. You know? And just a heads up, if you did want to know anything about my trip or whatever to the States to visit, like, Views by Quinn, Moving Pictures, Film Forager, uh, Cat Reviews, if you want to know anything about all that, then you can go to the latest podcast episode, I'll put a link to it in the description. It's episode 16 of the podcast where we talk about it, and it's a lot of fun, so yeah, if you want to know all about that, then check it out. But anyway, let's get into the honorable mentions. These are in no particular order. We have Riders of Justice, Shiver Baby, Raya and the Last Dragon, The French Dispatch, Venom Let There Be Carnage, The Last Duel, and Blue by You. And if you want to know my thoughts on any of those, then they're always up on my letterbox store. Some of these I have videos for, so yeah. Same with the whole list, basically. <laughs> and let's get into the actual list. So at number 20, we have Mass. A really heavy watch, but one that can be really engaging in the moment. The acting carries it, really. It wouldn't be nearly as good without the main four being as great as they are. Jason Isaacs and Martha Plinton especially just blew me away. They are amazing. Everyone is here. And it's just a really solid, contained drama that I found very captivating. At number 19 we have The Worst Person in the World. While I didn't rave over it like most, it's a movie that I really appreciated, especially having let it sit after a while. It's a really special film in many ways, and it feels special to me in some way just because of being on my trip to Ireland and getting to see it there. It's a great film. The acting carries it so hard sometimes, man. <laughs> These actors are all just fucking fantastic and the writing is amazing. It's a great film. At number 18 we have Dune. While it is at a lower score than the other two on this list so far, that's mainly because I feel like I've come to appreciate more about it whenever I think of it. I certainly think a rewatch would improve it. It's one of those things where I can overlook the fact that I don't care too much about the characters because of the fact that the visuals and world building and scale of some scenes is mind-blowingly great. The things that are great about Dune really stick with you, I think. So yeah, fuck it. It goes on the list. <laughs> at number 17 we have Pig, a superb drama. Something I didn't expect it to be at all. It sort of markets itself weird, which is the biggest issue. But once you understand what the film is, it's really special. The writing is fantastic, and Nicolas Cage and Alex Wolfe are really special. It's an amazing film. One moment, I'm actually getting cold. At number 16 we have Boiling Point. It's somehow super adrenaline inducing, but also has these really grounded dramatic moments. And I love the way they balance that with this movie. Boiling Point is absolutely terrific. I love one-shot films where they're done well, and this just fucking blew me away. It's so brilliant. Stephen Graham and Vinette Robinson are fantastic. I love the cast and the way the film was crafted. It's amazing. At number 15 we have Lamb. I'm so surprised at how much I like this. Conceptually, it's kind of silly, but they somehow made it really sincere with the themes and story structure. It's tragic and strange and beautiful. Really loved it. The acting is fantastic, the story is engaging, and the cinematography is to die for. At number 14 we have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I really really liked it. I found this movie to be a real breath of fresh air with Marvel. It has a lot of fun but it's also really good at taking its time. The characters are great and I love the look of it. Just so good. I also don't understand a lot of the criticisms with the end being too like CGI heavy. In terms of like final battle moments in Marvel, I actually really like it. Maybe that's just me, I am some kind of crazy fucking Marvel fanboy, but I mean, I can acknowledge that lately they haven't been doing too well. Anyway, yeah. 
It's great shit. Cannot wait to see more of this character. At number 13, we have Minamata. Still not getting the appreciation it deserves. This movie really hit me and just continues to linger on. The subject matter was so heartbreaking and they really did justice to emphasizing how impactful it was. Superbly directed, for sure. However, it wouldn't be quite as good without Johnny Depp giving one of his best roles. No joke, he blew me away in this movie, and I love what he was able to do with this character. I absolutely love this film. More people need to see it. Please, if you haven't seen it, watch it. At number 12, we have Nobody. What can be said? It's a banger. The action is so fucking cool, the pacing is fantastic, the breaks between action scenes actually feel interesting, it's shot so well, Bob Odenkirk kicks some fucking ass, it's just cool as fuck. Really loved it. There's just not much more to be said, like just see it if you haven't and you'll know. <laughs> At number 11 we have Nitram, a bleak, painful, ballsy, and heartbreaking film. It is something that could be argued against with it didn't need to be made, and I would totally understand that. However, it worked extremely well, and I'm glad it exists. Caleb Landry Jones is easily one of the best 2021 performances, and the film itself took me on such a uncomfortable journey that had me really uneasy for a while, and I honestly love it for that. Incredible film. At number 10 we have Annette. I do feel like with more rewatches it could move up on the list and move to a 10 out of 10. That doesn't mean I don't love it. Some things about the first watch just had me perplexed and overwhelmed and I'm sure that some feelings would be more concrete if I saw it a few more times. But I do love the best parts that it has going. Particularly the look, the acting and of course the music. It's a surreal, deep and complex piece of film and I really just adore so much about it. At number 9 we have The Sparks Brothers. This movie being at number 9 honestly feels like a crime. This film is unbelievably perfect. Edgar Wright was the absolute perfect choice to put this together and I'm so glad that it came out the way it did. It's clear that so much passion went into it and it really showcases everything you need to know about Sparks. For non-fans I imagine it's not as engaging but even then it's probably very interesting. As a film documenting one of my favourite bands of all time I honestly couldn't have been happier with it. It's a masterpiece. At number 8 we have The Night House. While it is a lower score than The Sparks Brothers, the more I think about it, the more it improves. It's easily one of the most noteworthy horror films of the last few years if you ask me. And it's a shame that it isn't as well received as things like Hereditary, Get Out, The Witch, It Follows, or any other modern horror movies. I hope it gets that status one day because I think it's very special, I really loved it. Can definitely see it becoming a 10 for me in the future, Rebecca Hall is fantastic and she needs more appreciation, watch this film. At number 7 we have Ninja Baby. I'm sure that there are probably a lot of people that haven't heard of this movie. I 100% think it would be a perfect score on rewatch. Every time I think back on it, I love it more. It's just such a beautiful story told so well and I really love the sentiment it gives off towards the end. It doesn't feel predictable and the characters really develop nicely as it goes on. It's hilarious as well. Plenty of moments made me laugh, plenty made me smile, and plenty made Made me emotional. It's such a gorgeous film and I hope that it gets the attention it deserves one day. At number 6 we have Spider-Man No Way Home. Your friendly neighborhood Marvel fanboy coming at ya. Yeah, I still think this movie is perfect. Objectively, sure, it's flawed. But for me, it's perfect. I fucking adore it. It's the last truly great thing from the MCU that we've gotten, I think, and I was so surprised at how much I loved what it did. The story was consistently engaging as hell, the characters were fleshed out better than they have ever been, the action was incredible, the acting from Willem Dafoe, Tom Holland, Zendaya, and Benedict Cumberbatch was fantastic, the visual element was top notch, I loved it so much. I probably always will. <laughs> Getting into the top 5 now, we have The Suicide Squad. I'm saying it right here and now. Now, this movie did not get the respect it deserves. <laughs> While it was generally well received, it should be something that people refer to more often when talking about the best like superhero comic book movies. It's fucking incredible and a easy 10 out of 10. If you don't like it that's fine, but man I just can't get over how perfect it turned out. The Suicide Squad not only turned uninteresting characters into something brilliant, it introduced new ones that still stick out to me so much. Primarily Rick Flagg who was so fucking boring in the predecessor, but here is sort of my favourite part. And bringing in Peacemaker who I fucking adore. I could go on for ages, like leave it to James Gunn to do something this special and have it be so hilarious, beautiful, emotional, gripping, and action packed. It's such a mesmerizing and downright fucking awesome film. 
Fucking hell. <laughs> I love it. At number four, we have Drive My Car. Three hours of pure beauty. I was overwhelmed, gripped, and warmed by this film. The experience of watching it in a small, cozy cinema and being wrapped up in the experience was incredible. It's such an immersive and beautiful film. The cinematography, lighting, locations, and score make it so stunning, but of course the acting makes it what it is. Hidetoshi Nishijima played this main role so well and showcases a range of emotions with such subtlety. It's incredible. Toko Miura is amazing. Everyone in the cast is amazing. I can't get over how the film made me feel. It's just absolutely beautiful and a true masterpiece to me. I can't wait to check out more of this director's films as well. I just want to say before getting on to the next one, two and three are extremely interchangeable for me. It was so fucking hard to make this kind of decision, but uh, yeah, just know that they're, they are really interchangeable and I... Yeah. <laughs> At number three, we have The Green Knight. It genuinely pains me to put this at number three. So much. Do not let that downplay how much I adore it though. This is one of the best films I've ever seen. I love it so goddamn much and everything about it just works for me. Dev Patel got the chance to prove himself in the best way and he just dominates the main role. His emotions are so well communicated throughout. The story gripped me so much and the overall message hammered into me and I have never forgotten the feeling that it gave me. It's an overwhelming movie to me and one that I adore so very much. With time maybe it would swap to number two, I'm not sure, but for now it's here and I love it endlessly. Incredible cinema and breathtaking storytelling. At number two we have No Time to Die. I know, I know, a lot of people wouldn't have this so high. I completely get it and yes, I could see why people have some problems with it, but I find it hard to recall a better action blockbuster in a long time. This shit had me riveted for the entirety of the 2 hours and 43 minute runtime. How does it manage to do that so well? I saw it twice and I was in love with it. Honestly, one of my favourite theatre experiences ever. I mean, the night that I saw it the first time was a bit of like chaos because we actually didn't make it to the screening we were supposed to because we were running around a fucking mall trying to figure out where the theatre was. So we had to get a later session, but I mean, once I actually got there and sat down, like, it, one of the best fucking theatre experiences of my life, easily. It's just so fucking perfect, man. I have a lot of connection to this series and this was the absolute perfect way to wrap it up. Daniel Craig is a fucking powerhouse here and I love the character more than ever in this film. It felt like by the end you can really feel for James in a number of ways that you probably didn't think possible. I cannot give enough credit to the writers. The supporting cast is all amazing, the cinematography is outstanding, the score is grand, everything worked for me. A masterpiece that I will always love. It feels so hard to even decide between this and Skyfall as my favourite one. Like, fuck me. <laughs> And finally, at number one, we have Titan. Nothing contests it. If I combined my favourite movies of 2017, 2018, and 2020, those being A Ghost Story, First Reformed, and I'm Thinking of Ending Things, this would be the highest. Now yes, I passed out while watching it the first time, but that kind of experience sticks with you and definitely adds on to how affecting it can be. This movie well and truly fucked me up in places, and yet I have nothing but love for it. A lot of the reason for that is because of the message that comes toward the end, which I won't spoil, but essentially the way that these two characters operate and how their relationship grows is something I find overwhelmingly beautiful. And somehow the fucking genius Julia de Cornell, I have no idea if I'm saying that right, managed to hide that beautiful message inside a royally fucked up movie. It's such a weird and disturbing film, but I see nothing but beauty. It's crazy how it managed to impress itself on my heart this much, but I'll always love it for that and think it's a genuine masterpiece and one of the best films honestly ever made in my eyes. I totally get people not liking it, I really do, but I was overwhelmed, blown away, destroyed, and infatuated with it. Undoubtedly the best film of 2021. So those were my best movies of 2021. What did you think of the list? Have you seen any of these movies? Did you like them? Did you not like them? What the fuck is your opinion on all of it? Let me know down below. And please check out my links down in the description. And if you haven't already, please check out my letterbox and if you want to know what I think about a film then just look it up. And if you're following me then my rating or my review should come up and yeah you'll know and just a heads up as i said i do have a podcast with a guy called quinn it's called yeah no no yeah we just recorded episode 17 we brought keelan back on as a guest and it was great we talked about the star wars prequels so that'll be coming out pretty soon 
And before that, we had the episode where we talked about the trip. And on episode 15, we talked about all of our like most recent watches and stuff. There's like tons of lovely content on there. So if you're ever looking to kill some time and listen to a podcast and listen to two guys talk about bullshit for a couple of hours, then go for that because we have a great time doing it and I love it. And you should too. And if you did enjoy this video, then please subscribe. It really, really helps me. And thank you as always for watching. I respect your opinion and I hope you have a great day. And bye.